you need is an LED, 270 ohm resistor, a breadboard, and a Raspberry Pi. I'm using the third generation, but this will also work on the second. Also, if you will be following the iOS app part of this tutorial, you will need the newest version of Xcode. In future tutorials, I will show you guys how to work humidity, temperature, motion, and other sensors. Okay, let's get right into it. The first thing you want to do is go to firebase.google.com and sign in to your Google account in the top right corner. Once you're signed in, you want to click go to console. So I'm already signed in. Once you're in the console, you want to click create new project. And we'll just name it um, test project. So now it's going to create the project. And now we're going to add it to our iOS app. If you're not um, thinking about adding it to your iOS app because you're not planning on uh, building it or you just don't want to, you can just skip past this part. Okay, now we're going to add Firebase to our iOS app. And if you're not planning to do this, you can just skip ahead. So we're going to open up Xcode and create a new project, single view application. Then um, we'll just call the product name test project again. And make sure your language is Swift and um, you should be ready to go. I'm just going to choose iPhone for devices because I'm going to be running it on an iPhone. And then let's create the folder wherever you want. And once we're in, we need to copy this bundle identifier and go back to our browser and then click on add Firebase to your app and then paste that in here and then click add app. And now it will download a file called Google Service Info Plist and we want to drag that into our Xcode So now once we've successfully added the Google service info plist, we have to navigate back to the browser and continue the process. So now what this wants us to do is to create a pod file and initialize um, CocoaPods. So we do that by opening up terminal and putting in these commands. But first we have to navigate to the folder in which we created the Xcode project. So I created mine in a folder on my desktop. And now I'm going to run this command pod init. And that should go by fairly quick. And then once you run that, it should create a file in that folder. So we'll go back to the Xcode and go to the project folder. And you'll see this one right here, pod file and we want to open that up and first uncomment this line right here because we are using Swift and we have to paste this in. We'll actually be going back to this pod file and putting in a couple more of these pods for our project but we'll do that later. So now we just put it in at the top and save it by just doing con command s. And then once we do that, we have to go back to the terminal and run pod install as it says here. So we'll just run that. Okay, now that it has finished downloading, I will just clear this terminal and continue oh yeah I almost forgot another important step that we have to do is we have to go back to the project folder and we have to actually open this new test project.exe workspace so we will just close out of this one right here and open this up and now you'll see two projects here and 
this is where all of our new pods are installed. Okay, now that we've got our pods initialized, we can go back to our Firebase console and continue the process. So when we come here, we see the initialization code that we have to put into our app delegate file. So we'll just copy and paste that in. So we'll go back to the Xcode project. We can just close this and then go to appdelegate.swift and just paste that right under import UI kit. And then we also have to paste this line right here, this for app that configure into this function right here did finish launching with options and once we put in those two lines of code we can go back into our browser and finish this process and it will show this in the list of apps so we do not have to wait for this this thing to load now our next step is to go into database and head over to the rules and then change both both of these properties right here read dot read and dot write to true and you can just click publish and then you just click dismiss for that essentially what changing these two to true does it lets us read and write information from our database wherever we uh, wherever we choose to so now that we've done this we have to go back to our Xcode and actually add one more pod so we'll go into our pods project and now we can access our pod file from Xcode and we will just put in another pod called Firebase oh, whoops. Firebase slash database and this will just give us all of the privileges to write to our Firebase database and then once we do that we should just open up our terminal again and since I'm already navigated to the folder before it's there already and we just run pod install again And once we finish installing the database pod, we can move to the next step, which is uploading data to our database. So we'll go back into our browser and then go to the data tab of our database. And then now we will see a tree where we will add a child called LED and we'll set it to um, just an empty string because we will be changing the string in our program so just add two double quotes and once we do that we will go back into our Xcode and then we will navigate to the view controller and we will add a function so So basically what this function does is it sets this LED value that we had in our database to a dictionary containing a state and that will be assigned to whatever whatever value whatever string value we put into our parameter. So we'll just call our command here. So we'll say on. So then that will set the LED value to state on. But before we do this and we can run our program, we have to import two libraries, which is obviously Firebase and Firebase database. And once we do that, we can run our program. And right now it's running in the simulator. 
so we can just look at our app it's not going to display anything but as you can see right here it set this LED value to state on right when the view did load but you can't really see that because we didn't set anything in our storyboard and now once we get that working we can go back to our Xcode and then we can start working on the storyboard so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a tap gesture recognizer so that we can be notified when the screen gets tapped that we're gonna click this button right here which is the assistant editor Oh, whoops. and then we will control drag this tap gesture recognizer to our view controller code so then we'll name this we're gonna set it to an action and we'll call it on view tapped and now we can start filling out the code okay now I'll just run this new code and I'll explain it to you guys while it's running okay so it looks like the app just loaded up and that aligns perfectly with the code that I wrote in the view to load which is basically just saying right when the view loads up then it will switch the LED state value to off and it will also change the background color of our view to red so that's what happened over here and then my on view tap function which I assigned to the UI tap just recognizer it should turn the it should turn the color of the screen or the view to green when it's red and it should turn it to red when it's green so right now it's red so it should turn it to green and it will also turn the LED value to on so basically whenever the background is green the LED state value will be on in the database and whenever it's red it's gonna be off so I'll show you the database so right now it's on and as you can see in the simulator it's green so now let's see what happens when we click it again and it goes to red so as you can see the state turned to off this is our setup for the Raspberry Pi as you can see we have one LED one 270 ohm resistor and two wires and then of course our Raspberry Pi the LEDs longer leg will be connected in the row with the red wire and the shorter leg will be connected in the row with the 270 ohm resistor. Now coming to the back of the breadboard, you want to connect the other side of the resistor to the right of these two columns and then connect the black wire right above it. Now on the Raspberry Pi you want to connect the red wire to the GPIO 18 port and the black one to ground. Okay guys, to get everything up and running on the Raspberry Pi we need to install two libraries via the terminal. The first one we're going to be installing is Raspberry Pi GPIO, which just lets us use the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi, where we connected our LED and our ground pins. So we do that by sudo So this command basically installs this library for Python 3.2 or Python 3 in general which we will need because the other library we're going to be installing which is Pyrebase only works on Python 3 so now we just press enter and since I already have it installed this it just gives me this but it should it should install the full package on your screen and it will take a little bit more time and then our next library that we're going to be installing is Pyrebase which is a REST API client for Python and it only works on Python 3 that's why we installed the GPIO library on Python 3 
So we do that by putting this command. And for some reason it's giving this red text in the terminal which usually means that there was some failure but yeah it says storing debug log for failure but I don't think I don't think this should be an issue because I already have it installed and I don't know why it took so long so the next step we have to take is to create a new Python file on our desktop so do empty file and then we will just call it led.py and create it. And now that led.py has shown up on our desktop, we can just right click on it and then click Python 3 to open with. And if it doesn't give you that option, go to open with when you right click and then navigate to programming and then go to Python 3 over here. But so now we should have our Python file opened up in the Python 3 ideally. As you can see, I did add a lot of code to this file, and I won't be typing it out in front of you guys because it would just take too long. So basically, I'll just go through the code and explain um, what you need to change in order for it to work on your Raspberry Pi. So first I'll just go over a couple of the lines of code. So in these top few lines of code, I'm importing the different libraries that we just installed, which was the Raspberry Pi GPIO library. So for that, you just need to put in this line. And then I'm importing time, but this is an already pre-installed library. So we did not have to install it in the terminal. And 